Now, Zach, you went in with PBS News Hour, so you were well funded. You, it was video team, which is a different animal from writing and still photography. I understand you had some run-ins with the authorities, so if you could tell us about your experience working in a, in a amidst a state repression. Yeah, I mean, just jumping off on the visa a bit, since PBS was where this project, eight different pieces about various stories in Russia, 10 minutes a piece was going to air, it was easy to get all of the paperwork needed because Russia is very particular about broadcasters. PBS luckily is a television network, so that check the box in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of where's it going to end up, is it legitimate, you know, and they, they couldn't fight it, I guess, is what it comes down to. Um, and, um, you know, in terms of being on the ground, so the play took place in Chechnya, right next door to Chechnya is Dagestan. We did, one of our stories was about uh, a guy who left Dagestan to go fight with ISIS in Syria and then left his fight in Syria because he didn't like what ISIS was doing and then was living in Ukraine because he would be killed if he came back to Russia. And we met this fighter's father and spent days with him in Dagestan to sort of get an idea of what the environment was like for, you know, somebody who might be attracted to ISIS living in Dagestan and how the state, much like, you know, the Chechen war was like, is very repressive towards the state of the people of Dagestan and it makes radicalism easier. Uh, and there was one mosque in the capital of Dagestan, Mahachkala, where many fighters who went to ISIS were from. So this was a mosque that would have Friday prayers like all mosques, and then after Friday prayers, the Dagestan police would set up a checkpoint and randomly arrest at least 50 people of you know, Friday prayers, which probably 500 people went to. And it was just, there was no rhyme or reason as to who got arrested. And, you know, they were, the people of the mosque were helping us out and they showed us where the checkpoint was. So I got my camera on my shoulder and got, you know, probably 10 seconds of footage off before myself and Nick Schiffer and the correspondent and Roman, our local producer, were all arrested. And I think they thought we were all just local Russians. And then once we started speaking English, they were confused. And then all they wanted us to do was to delete the footage. But luckily, they had left us in the police car alone. There's two slots of discs where the, you know, the camera records. I took one of the discs out that had the footage on it, gave it to Roman, the local producer, who hid it somewhere, and then convinced the police, saying, look, I didn't even press record yet. This is an empty disc. You know, there was no footage. And they. Um, and this was after an hour where they tried to turn on the camera themselves and couldn't do it. <laughs> um, so finally they brought me in and they're like, turn on the camera, and I did. And they're like, where's the footage? And I'm like, just, you know, I don't think they could read it because it was in English, but it said, you know, empty card. And they had to bring in Roman to translate to say it says empty card, and they thought that I was playing a trick. And so we had to sit. I mean, it took like two hours, and within the two hours, you know, we saw at least 50 people from the mosque all sitting in the courtyard, you know, and I luckily, I was disarmed, I had no camera, they took our phones away, but it was just like, and this is a, a weekly occurrence, so it definitely shows in this sort of environment with, you know, the total randomization of being arrested just for going to a mosque, why, it's, you know, it's easy to, to look towards the radical side of things. But, you know, if you if you are a, a local, let's say, in a you, you wouldn't get your gear back. Yeah. That's, so, that's, you know, in terms of... It would have taken more. I, I was detained in Dagestan with a Russian, and uh, we were held for eight hours, and it was brutal. I mean, they were not nice. I mean, they were, they were threatening to kill her. Oh, wow. And I think only because I was an American did she get out of there. Yeah, and I, the, the very first time I went to Dagestan, I made this stupid mistake, never do this, of filming the checkpoint, driving, crossing. That was the Chechnya checkpoint. It was from South Ossetia to, to Chechnya. Don't stick your camera out the window. <laughs> but I, but I, I guess you didn't learn. Uh, yeah, so, no. <laughs> so again, they, again, they took me and I was with all Russians and they were just like, why is this one American with all Russians? And I had a tourist visa at the time because this was before the PBS trip. And ultimately, the very smart 
Russians I was with talked them out of everything. I just had to delete the footage and they let us go. Um, and that took about three hours, no torture or anything. I did sit in a, it was like a, on the border, there's, um, I guess they have semi trucks with like operation centers in, and I sat in a room and they sort of screamed outside of the room a little bit, I think to like scare me, but I wasn't scared and then maybe they weren't impressed. The, the one, one problem I think visually that we're all facing is, let's say, broad, speak broadly, it, you know, Western editors who expect us, you know, like for example, filming checkpoints is not a good idea almost any, anywhere, mm -hmm. especially in the totalitarian states. But there's an expectation uh, from your editor in New York or London that this is the sort of drama, even if there is no drama, that you will bring back. And there's pressure on us to kind of deliver something. And usually this pressure, this pressure is applied by people who themselves have either little field experience or they don't care because that's their expectation for uh, what is important while it may not be important at all. And uh, so if you, when you are essentially competing for your attention, you know, online or your editor's attention or grants or whatever, these, this is the danger zone when you take necessary and unnecessary risks by doing stuff that you're not supposed to do, you know, like, because there's no good reason for it. And it's not even important for the story. So the, yeah, the difference was the first time it was stupid, and yes, I, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to get great stuff, and they're going to be impressed, and boy, did I learn quickly that that was the worst idea ever. Uh, but the second time, it was specifically knowing, like, you just get this feeling, like, you know that this isn't going to go well. You know that it, if you're not going to get arrested, you're at least going to get stopped by the police. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, luckily, you know, as Misha had said over and over again, you have to sort of game plan it out and figure out what you're going to do, and, like reacted quickly, hid the footage, and then they couldn't find it, and that was that. Yeah.